Hello you guys, I am back. I wanted to share some tips and tricks with you on how to stay organized when you're piecing together multiple pieces in a quilt top. I have a few things that might save you some time and help you stay organized in this process. We'll be right back. Okay, you guys, one of the things that we all have problems with is staying organized from the design phase of our quilt to actually bringing everything to the machine. So I have a few different tips, things that I do that help me stay organized in this process. As you can see, we've already laid out everything in the order that we want it to be. So we know the overall look and the placement of the blocks is just the way we would like it to be. Now, how many of you know how difficult it is to keep everything in the place where you have placed it while bringing it over to the machine and sewing together your rows? It gets very, very, very confusing. So I've come up with a few things that I thought I would share with you guys that helps me stay organized and maybe it will help you uh, when you're piecing together quilts with lots and lots and lots of pieces and you want them to stay exactly where you have designed them to be. First things first, what I usually do is place everything on the wall. If you don't have a design wall, it's no problem. Place it on the floor or on a table. I used to use my bed because it was a perfect size to lay things out and I could see the whole quilt in one view and I would do my placement there. Fortunately, we have put together a design wall out here in the studio, and so you can see the quilt top behind me. Now, because the camera might make things reversed, I'm not sure, <laughs> so I hope this doesn't confuse you, but this row here is our first row. So this side to this side. We have eight blocks that go from left to right, and then 12 rows from top to bottom, the bottom ones you can't see. What I usually do is the number of rows, I cut off that many pieces of paper and I number them. So I'm gonna bring you down and show you what I do. And once I have all my pieces numbered, I adhere them to the first block of every row, okay? I'm going to go ahead and give you a shot of the pieces of paper that I use, just little bits of scrap, and also something else to help you stay organized um, when you're bringing everything to the machine. All right, you guys, you can see I have my 12 scraps, one for each row of our quilt, and they're numbered 1 through 12. The little arrows is another tip that I wanted to show you. We all heard about nesting our seams um, when we're piecing together rows of our quilt. Nesting the seams really helps uh, keep the thickness of our seams down and it also helps match our points when we're assembling our rows together. So one thing that I've come up with to help me remember when all of my rows are just laying in a big pile here is um, I draw little arrows, one pointing left, right, left, right, left, right, and so on, all the way down through my 12 pieces. And that way, when I chain piece my rows together, they can get mixed up and just in a big pile when I bring all my rows to the iron. And I don't have to try to remember, uh, do I, press my seams this way or do I press them that way? This little arrow helps me remember, okay, for the row one, we are pressing towards the left. So all my seams will be pressed to the left. For row two, all of my seams will be pressed to the right. Row three, all the seams pressed to the left, so on and so on. And so that way, when I'm assembling my rows, all of these seams in my blocks will nest together and help keep my points spot on and nice and together. It also eliminates a lot of bulk in those seams. So we have our 12 pieces. 
I'm going to go ahead and pin them on the first block of each row that goes all the way down and I'll just give you a quick screenshot of what that's going to look like. Okay, we're at the quilt and you can see I have pinned all of my pieces on all of the first blocks of each row. I usually like to try and pin them towards the center of the block. That way when I am pressing my seams and joining these seams at the machine, I can leave these pieces of paper on here so all of my blocks, I still know which order I'm sewing all of my rows in. And I don't usually take these pieces out until uh, I have several rows together and then I can remove some of these out of the way. Next, we're going to go ahead and stack all of our blocks so that we can glue baste our seams together. And that's the most exciting part that I want to show you today is glue basting your seams so that we can chain piece at the machine and all of our blocks stay where we want them to and we can just sit at the machine and don't have to worry about all of our pieces going out of order. So the way that I achieve this is I just stack my blocks and have little stacks at my pressing board so I can just sit there and press. I start with the first block and just go over and stack each one as we go across. And now here's our row one with our one and we know that when we press our seams we are pressing them in this direction. See how simple and organized that is? We make that stack. We collect our second row. And now we have row two. I'm going to go ahead and finish collecting our rows and I'm going to show you how I glue based all of my seams together. Okay, you guys, we are at the pressing board. I really hope that you don't mind this angle. I'm trying to get you so where you can see what I'm doing. And I hope you don't mind the mess I have going on in the shop. It is getting close to Christmas. I have about 20 journals that I want to make between now and Christmas. And so I have been stockpiling materials. And so my shop is a little crazy. And it's going to be that way until after the new year. So... Uh, we are at the pressing board. I have taken down all the rows from the board from the design wall and I have them stacked here and Because we've numbered each of the blocks the first block of each row We are organized so it does not matter if row 1 gets done first or row 12 gets done first each row is going to keep its place in our quilt because we have tagged the first block so here comes the funnest part for me is the glue basting and I'm going to tell you a couple advantages of using the school glue for the glue basting. Number one is it uh, washes out of your quilt. When you are done with the binding and you're done with your quilt, you throw your quilt in the wash and all of this is going to come out. Uh, number two is it is very inexpensive for the Elmer school glue. And number three is it really helps me stay organized and um, I don't have to keep guessing or worrying about my pieces getting switched and I don't catch it until the quilt is together and then I see a part that accidentally got swapped when I was piecing my rows together. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. And it helps me stay accurate when I'm at the machine and it speeds up the whole process. For me, it helps me keep a very accurate quarter inch seam allowance. And I can just sit there and sew and I don't have to worry about holding my pieces together, getting any little tucks and my seams. Everything stays nice and neat and perfect. So let's go ahead and show you how I glue based my entire row together before bringing it to the machine. Now I've said before in some of my other videos that you can purchase little tips, the little metal tips 
that can uh, screw to the base of your bottle if that helps you. It dispenses a very small amount of glue. I just have always used the tip that it comes with. Now you're going to want to keep your paper tab, like I mentioned before, on your block. And what I usually do is start off with block one. I run a very, very small bead of glue right along the edge of this block, keeping that glue within my quarter inch seam allowance, okay? So it's not a lot of glue, and it's close to the edge to avoid your quarter inch seam allowance. I just do little tiny dots all the way from top to bottom. I bring my second block of this row right sides together. I match up my piece perfectly and then come with the iron and heat set it. Now you'll want to remember to turn the steam off on your iron. We want to dry iron and um, I usually have it on a cotton setting and it just takes a second. Now I can flip up my block two, and I usually just do like a finger press so that stays down. I come in with my small beads of glue close to the edge, bring in block three, match it up perfectly, and hit it with the iron. And it's this process all the way through the row for each row. So while it seems like this is monotonous and it takes a lot of time, it goes by pretty quickly. And for me, it saves so much time when I'm sewing at my machine, you guys. I don't have to hold the, the corners together and the edges and make sure everything is staying, you know, nice and straight in the machine because it is it is basted together so while it does seem monotonous and time consuming to do this it does save us uh, time down the road and we don't have to worry about our pieces getting uh, mixed up or in the wrong position because everything is glued together For me, I usually turn on some music or turn on um, a YouTube video and have that playing. And so it goes by pretty quick, this whole process. And we will finish gluing at the first row together so that I can show you how it stays together um, once we're done. And you can see it's just a very short time that it takes for the iron to dry that glue and the, the glue is dry. The heat from the iron sets that glue and dries it very quickly. And so um, I had a viewer ask me the question about uh, will the glue gum up the needle in her machine or cause any issues with her machine and the answer is no. When we hit these pieces with the glue on them with the iron, it dries it. And so then it just becomes like any kind of uh, adhesive product that you would use in your quilt, like heat and bond, or um, some of those basting tapes, um, starch, you know, we, we add a lot of starch to our quilts when we're pressing. And um, it's just like one of those products. It is completely dry when it goes to the machine. And so I have never in the process since I've been doing, using the glue in about four years, have never experienced a problem with my machine. Not one time, not because of the glue. <laughs> I've had other issues like uh, not using the right needle for the fabrics that I was sewing together or, uh, not having the tension set right for the materials I was using, different things like that, but never any issues because I was using the glue 
doing the glue basting. All right, we're at our last piece. And again, it's just a small little bead of glue from the top of the block to the bottom next to the edge so that it stays within that quarter inch seam allowance because when we do hit it with the iron it does spread out just a little bit and so we try to keep all that glue nested in that quarter inch seam allowance okay you guys just like that all of our pieces are glued together because we do it close to the edge sometimes the glue like I said spreads out and adheres your blocks to your pressing board so you just have to give a small tug and all your pieces come up that's why I like to use something that I can wash because I do get glue on my pressing board and uh, so every once in a while I have to wash that. But all right, there is our row one. And it is glue basted together. All of our pieces will stay exactly where we want them. When we go to the machine, it's a very quick sew right along there. And we don't have to hold anything in place. And we can chain piece our rows together. And uh, it takes a lot of the stress out and trying to keep everything organized when you're sewing all your pieces at the machine. I will bring you over to the machine just to show you how uh, easy it makes the sewing process once you've used the glue basting. Guys, I have everything set up, uh, all my settings set up correctly for a quarter inch seam allowance. And I am ready to go. I hope you guys can see my setup here. Uh, again, we have our row that is all glue basted together. And I'm just going to show you how quick and easy the glue basting makes assembling your rows. We start with the first block, and you can see that. So at this point, all you're doing is making sure you sew a straight seam and that the edge of your pr presser foot is lined up with the edge of your fabric. You're not trying to make sure that your points meet at the top and bottom because everything is already lined up. Just like that, we have our first seam sewn together. I usually bring another block over so the seam cut those apart cut off my leader and then find another seam that has not been sewn together Flip over and find another seam that has not been sewn together. Cut those apart. Cut off my leader. This seam has not been sewn together. And let's see, this one has not been sewn together. Let's see if it'll fit in there. No, we're gonna go ahead and take it off. Alright, we are looking 
four seams that have not been sewn together. Here's one. See all the flipping and everything that I'm doing? And everything is still perfectly matched up because of the glue. There's any seams that are not sewn. One last seam that is not sewn together. All right, just like that, you guys, our block is all sewn together. And you can see how quick that was. So even though it seems like you are spending a lot of time at the pressing board gluing your seams together, everything is worth the time that you've done because everything stays straight. I didn't have to worry about my pieces going out of order. And just like that, that row is put together. Now, because... Um, we have this piece of paper on our first block. We know this is block one. And when we press all of our seams, they will go in uh, the left direction or towards the first block. I hope this tip has helped you guys. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you use this technique and if you have found any of these tips helpful. Thanks for watching my video, you guys. And I hope that... Uh, you have a wonderful, wonderful week and getting ready for Christmas. Bye, you guys.